Welcome into the Punt and Pass Podcast. I'm your host, Drew Butler, finally rejoined with my co-host, Aaron Murray. He is back from paternity leave. That's right. The Papa Bear is back in the saddle right here on Punt and Pass. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Punt and Pass. I am at Drew Butler. He is at Aaron Murray 11. It's Friday, July 31st, and we got some good news to report about the 2020 season. But before we get to that, let's check in with our guy, Aaron Murray. Great to see you. Great to hear from you. How is fatherhood, my man? It has been absolutely incredible. Little man, little Maddox has been a, uh, a true blessing. He's, he's, goodness gracious, man, he's sleeping through the night almost pretty much right now. Wakes up one quick time, give him a little bottle. He goes right back to bed in 30 minutes and wake him up at 7 o'clock. And uh, really, knock on wood, because I hope it doesn't turn you know for the worse, but he's been actually pretty easy. So uh, now I'm trying to convince Sharon, like, listen, it's not that hard. Let's get going with number two. <laughs> You're Let's crazy. Let's just get him. I said, let's get him knocked out, be done with it, to, you know, maybe a girl and uh, call it quits. But, no, he, he has been a blast. The pups love him. Sharon's been absolutely an incredible mother. And um, it's it's great. Now we just got to get all the babies together and have a little hangout with, with my boy and your girls. We certainly will do that. It's crazy. I was on social media the other day. I think it was Wednesday, and I got an alert on Instagram three years ago. In 2017, I think it was July 27th, 2017, we met in your old house in Chastain and started Punt and Pass. It's crazy. I didn't have any kids. You certainly were not married. And now I've got two kids. You are married with a kid. And this very episode takes us over 1 million organic downloads on the podcast. So that is in and of itself crazy. When I say a million downloads on the podcast, I mean from our host, SoundCloud, obviously, and not to brag, obviously we have exceeded that on all of our views from YouTube and social media and Twitter and Instagram and podcast listens. But this is organic downloads. So in three years, Aaron, congratulations, my man. We have gone over the 1 million mark. I'm proud of it. I know you're proud of it. And in good timing, we got great news yesterday about the SEC and their plans for the 2020 season. The ACC announced their plans on Thursday. Of course, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 announced last week that they were going conference only. But look, on Thursday, the ACC says, or on Wednesday, the ACC says, we're going to go with a 10-game conference schedule that will allow for one additional out-of-conference game, but it has to be played in that team's home state. So if you scratched your head and you looked at it from the outside, you said, wow, that seems like a great idea. That leaves the opportunity for Georgia to play Georgia Tech, Florida to play Florida State, Clemson, South Carolina, Louisville, Kentucky, and you thought this could look like somewhat of a normal season, and they allowed Notre Dame to be a full member of the ACC in 2020, allowing them to compete for a conference championship since 1896, I think was the year, or 1926. Something crazy like that. That was great news. The SEC follows up yesterday and goes, not so fast. We're going to go 10 games, conference-only schedule. They start September 26. So much to dive into, but it's great news. So congrats on a million downloads, my man. And finally, it looks like we can start looking towards some college football. Yeah, I think that's that's the positive news, and 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 I think after the ACC made their decision, I think most people were expecting the SEC to be very similar with the, the the conference only plus one. That way, we could get those games, and and I I was hoping, you know, I, I don't want to lose that game Georgia versus Georgia Tech. I don't want to lose Florida, Florida State, and some of those other big time games between SEC and ACC foes. But at the end of the day, I just keep reminding myself we're, we're getting football as of right now. You know, just be happy that you're getting 10 games. And I think most people are, I think there's probably a very few people that are obviously, you know, there's people that are disappointed. There's a difference between disappointed and maybe frustrated or upset. I think people yeah. are disappointed that maybe they're not getting these rivalry games, but I think also the, the educated person understands these are trying times. We just want football. We want to be able to sit on our couch on a Saturday and Sunday and watch college football and NFL football. And, and we're just happy that as of right now, that the guys making the decisions are doing the best for the campuses, the coaches, the players to make sure everyone's safe. So 
I, I'm pumped, man. I'm, I'm excited that I'm going to be able to get off my butt this, this fall, <laughs> do some traveling uh, to, to call these games. And um, it's, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully things are smooth. Hopefully things continue to get better. Uh, and we don't have what we had with like MLB. You know, I think that's another thing that scared me this week. As soon as the Marlins fiasco happened and all of a sudden you wake up and, oh, it's four players. Now it's 10 players plus two coaches. Then I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is the worst possible timing because college football is coming out this week, or at least the ACC and SEC making their decisions. I hope this doesn't uh, frighten any of the people making making those decisions. But um, right now, like I said, be happy. We're going to have football. Hopefully that continues and things continue to progress. And then 2021, we'll get back to a normal schedule again. Yeah, no question. You, you you really made a great point. There's a difference between being sad and, and being disappointed. Sad is having no college football. I mean, that would have been full-on depression for much of the Southeast, much of the South, much of our listeners, because it's a culture. And we love covering the game. We love talking about it. We love planning our weekends around college and NFL football for some. But disappointed, yes. I'm sure a lot of people are bummed that Georgia won't be playing in the Chick-fil-A Classic kickoff game against against Virginia on Labor Day Monday night. I'm sure a lot of people are upset that Georgia will not be playing Georgia Tech Thanksgiving weekend. But look, a 10-game SEC-only schedule is probably one of the best outcomes that could have come from this entire situation. The ACC obviously allowed the door to be open for some of those games to be played. I wonder if the decision to come out and say the only way that out-of-conference game can happen is if the game is in-state because that really allowed for four or five teams in the ACC to move forward with that in-state rivalry. The other schools, I don't know, are you just shit out of luck? Who knows? But taking a 10-game SEC conference schedule, still will be playing in divisions, I think is a great way to move forward. It's great for TV ratings. There's going to be a couple of extra conference games added, obviously. How will those be added? It was reported by Ross Dellinger from Sports Illustrated, who's really been on top of this entire thing, that the next two rotational divisional opponents, so Georgia would have picked up, I believe, Mississippi State and Arkansas, Florida would have picked up Alabama and uh, I think A and M. I believe it's A and M. That's right. Yeah. Tennessee <laughs> would have picked up um, LSU and Ole Miss, so possibly getting that Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss versus Tennessee game. But he since kind of walked that back and said reportedly it's going to be decided on strength of schedule. He says he is now told that a separate scheduling model composed by the league office using strength of schedule will determine the two additional opponents for 2020. He adds, if the league simply used the next two opposite division rotation, it would disrupt the 2021 and 22 schedules. Some are not in favor of such a model. Thus, a new scheduling model is expected to be used. SEC athletic directors don't necessarily expect all of their currently scheduled SEC games to remain in their same days, as you'd expect. Some might. Some won't. These guys are about to start actual full-blown camp to get ready for that September 26th kickoff date. But the schedule is going to be great. Georgia is still playing Florida in Jacksonville. I thought McGarity had a great quote with that. He goes, look, I'm not going to say have us go to Gainesville when there's going to be 10,000 fans. And then next year, you know, we they come here and we have 93,000 or vice versa. Keep it in Jacksonville, I guess, if there's going to be limited capacity or no capacity. But there are so many decisions to be made. I'm just glad that they get to make the decisions now based on football being played. This is huge. The SEC championship game will still be December 19th. I think the next rip will fall. And yes, the Big 12 will announce early next week. They're meeting over four or five models to decide on how they'll move forward. The next domino to fall is how the college football playoff reacts to everything that's going on. Do you think they stick with four? Do they try a one-year expansion to eight? A lot of questions to be answered. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting too. I mean, how does this affect? I was watching uh, CBS HQ yesterday, and they were talking about: Is this the year now that all of a sudden, if the SEC only has ten games and they're losing out, you know, one game and maybe a couple conferences somehow keep a twelve-game schedule? If you have a nine and one or say an eight and two SEC team, do they not make it to the playoffs um, because of that? Because they have two less games, you look at them a little bit differently, and that 
my opinion, no. SEC, I think, and I think everyone still believes this. For the majority of the country, believes this. It's still the best co- conference in the country. Yeah. So I would still take an eight and two, or at the time, if they win the SEC championship game, a nine and two SEC team uh, to put them, uh, say, at Alabama or, or Georgia or Florida. I would still put them in the college football playoff at the end of the day over a, a one loss team for another division that may have played one or two more games. I, I don't think that matters. I think that the, the quality of the games, adding two more SEC games, I think even adds on to the fact that you're playing a tougher schedule than anyone else in the country. I, I have one question for you, Drew. I'd love to, to, to throw it at you and see what you think. Getting rid of divisions. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of people have, have been in favor of it. I think it's kind of fun. I mean, at the end of the day, you get the best two teams playing in the conference championship at the end of the day. Um, I know it's great to, to, you know, I have an SEC East championship ring on me and you have the SEC West championship rings for the other side. And, you know, it, it is a prideful thing to win your side of the division. But at the end of the day, all that matters is winning the SEC. Yeah. And, and when you get to Atlanta, you want the best two teams playing in that game. And sometimes it's not always the case because of the division. So I'm in favor. I'm interested to see how it goes for, for these conferences, the ACC and ICC and everyone else, uh, now that they're kind of breaking it up for the season. Yeah, ACC is going to have a great um, t- trial period for that because they're not having – their divisions this year. It's the top two teams make it to the ACC championship game. Obviously, I would think the two favorites would be Clemson and Notre Dame. Clemson's odds to win uh, have dropped since Notre Dame has joined into the ACC out of convenience, and obviously I have thoughts about that. Look, it's Notre Dame. They get to do whatever they want. I do think it's great that the ACC commissioner forced Notre Dame to share their revenue from NBC among all 14 ACC schools. Look, if they're going to jump into the league, they better split the pie, and I think that was good on him. So Notre Dame is a full-on ACC member in 2020. Will they be wearing the ACC patch on their jersey? Who knows? But they did away with the uh, divisions in the ACC. And I think it'll be great to just show, hey, who are the top two teams of winning percentage in our league? They will play for the ACC championship. I believe. Am I right in saying that there is still an ACC championship game? Correct. There is. Yes. Yes. The, I the top so. two teams will play in it. Yes. Yeah. So you know, I, which, which I think is awesome. I I, 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 I I hope after this season too that Notre Dame just sticks with. I mean, if they're able to still keep their NBC contract, but just split the revenue among the other teams too. That way, Notre Dame's still on NBC when they play their home games, and then they're start, they're they're a part of a conference at the end of the day as well. I just think it's great for everyone. I think it's great for them. I think it helps them when it comes to recruiting. I think it helps when it comes to getting back into the college football playoffs, I, and just making that that division or that conference just a little bit better as well. I mean, it has been. I'm not saying Notre Dame's going to come in now and, and and beat Clemson, but at least it's another quality opponent to make things interesting. You know, especially with a quarterback like Ian Book that Notre Dame's bringing back this year, that game could be pretty good. You got two great quarterbacks, two great programs, two great coaching staffs. Um, I'm, I'm hoping this is this is a positive that we take out of this season going forward for college football and for the ACC. I totally agree with you, and um, I just have one question. And Barrett Salee from CBS Sports brought up a great point yesterday on Fine Bomb. Look, the ACC made this decision two days ago. The SEC made this decision yesterday. The Big Twelve is making their decision about how to go forward with 2020 early next week. Why the hell did the Big Ten and the Pac-12 three weeks ago? Make the decision to say, nope, we're going conference only. All of the questions are done. We're moving forward conference only. Three weeks ago. So much has changed in three weeks. The world is crazy enough. Why not take in every bit of information you can, collaborate, and come to a collective decision to then make the most pragmatic approach towards the 2020 season? That, to me, is crazy why would you have ever made that decision so long ago when probably i mean obviously the best conference in the nation the sec and uh, two other gigantic ones in in the power five waited what was the point of them making that decision and really putting everything up in the air doesn't make any sense to me yeah at time i know there we were getting to a crunch at some point but i said this two months ago i was like just be patient man there's no reason to make a decision 
Um, I even thought it was maybe a little bit early to bring players back uh, to campus. I thought if you did what the SEC is doing and pushing the, the season back a few weeks, you could have brought players back in July. But uh, things have knocked on what have been good with those guys back and working out for the majority of teams. But time is on your side. I know you want to get the schedule set. I know you want to get the travel set. I know you want to put it behind you and start planning for the season. But at the end of the day, it, it gave them no – it didn't help them at all. I thought the SEC and ACC made the best decisions of letting this thing continue to play out. Um, and, and right now I think they're looking like the smarter conferences by letting by kind of seeing what, what's going to unfold. So, um, yeah, I'm with you. I, I, I thought there was no reason to rush it. Um, I know things are a little bit crazier, say, out there in California, maybe in their minds with, with what's going on with the coronavirus. But – at the end of the day, save it. And, and like you said, you, we could have pushed the season back like the SEC doing for yeah. a few more weeks to give them even more time to plan everything out. Yeah, why rush it? It, it really doesn't make any sense. Quick question, yes or no. If it's a 10-game only conference schedule for the SEC, what are their odds of getting two teams into the college football playoff? I don't think you get two, two, two teams. Um, I, it's just going to be too hard unless you somehow get – Two teams that are ten and zero at the end of the season, which is going to be even tougher because you're going to be playing more SEC teams um, going at it when it comes to the SEC championship game, going to be played on December nineteenth now. So I think one team, I think regardless of what the record is, unless it's say seven and three uh, heading into the SEC championship game and they win it, then maybe you don't get an SEC team in. Oh wow! But if the SEC, yeah, but if the SEC winner is a two-loss team, I think they're in. I just don't see two getting in this year, though. I, I, I would agree with you on that point. And again, I'll be really fascinated to see what the college football playoff decides. It seems like they'll probably stay with four, but Bill Hancock, I talked about this on a podcast a couple weeks ago. He had a great, great interview with Dennis Dodd. He was the first one to say, we will make our decision at the very last moment we have to. We will let everything play out as it should, make the decision when we need to, and go from there, which I think every conference should have. Good on the ACC, good on the SEC, good on the Big 12. Shame on you, Big 10 and Pac-12. I mean, it was crazy to make those decisions three weeks ago. I just, I simply do not get it. Keep in mind, the SEC also made a very important decision by pushing back the start to September 26. That is three full weeks later than the season would have started. Of course, Labor Day weekend was week one, the official kickoff. They are essentially saying, we will give our campuses a three-week buffer, right? And believe me, in those three weeks, there will be bad news because the coronavirus infections on college campuses, they will spike. People are coming back from all over the world to these college campuses. And of course, sports media will cover it and say, shut it down. No football season allowed. But this is why they are making that decision to see how it happens when everybody gets back on campus. Obviously, they're going to try to isolate their football players and student athletes as much as possible and then move forward in the safest way to continue on with the football season. And then on the flip side, Oklahoma, for example, Aaron, moved up their start date. They are playing their first football game before students get on campus to get this thing rolling. I think that's a good idea too. Push it back or move it forward, but get the ball rolling. And it seems like we are moving in that direction. So I'm happy. You're happy. You and I had a conversation with the production company yesterday. We got stuff planned. We got shows we're trying to get rolling we want to work, and I have said it since the beginning. Football players want to play. Football coaches want to coach. It's time to get this thing rocking and rolling. What about this? And we'll take a little bit of a, a side turn before we wrap this thing up. Did you see the news yesterday that the NCAA is allowing student athletes to wear patches on their jersey for social causes or movements, and they can put whatever they want on the back of their jerseys. Did you see that? Yeah, it's a, I, I didn't see the part where they could put anything on they want on the back of the jersey. You talk about like the nameplate. They yeah, it make says it, this uh, is Sham Sharania from Stadium Network. The NCAA will allow student athletes in all sports to wear social justice statements on their uniforms, including replacing last names with words to celebrate or memorialize people, events, or other causes. I, I I understand the gesture, but I don't think the average college football fan wants an 18-year-old from Georgia or LSU or Tennessee or Ohio State or USC to tell them what they think 
about politics or race or any social justice movement. I just don't think that they want to see that when they're watching football. So I was kind of confused by the statement by the NCAA. I mean, look, I get it. There's going to be plenty of great causes that are brought to light. I just don't think Saturday they, they at three thirty is the time to do it. I mean, they, they could have done what the what the NFL does, you know, with the cleats. You know, one game a year. Or I don't know how many games the NFL does it now, but it's it's my cause, my cleat, or my yeah, pe- my yeah. cleat, my my. God. Once one once one game out of the season, do something like that. Whether it's on the jersey, whether it's custom cleats to support, you know, whatever charity you believe in or, or whatever cause you believe in, I think that would have been fine. But for an entire year. Uh, to be able to do this, I think it was uh, a little bit overboard. Uh, I get obviously the the environment and the day that we live in right now, and all the craziness going on in the world. That they're trying to maybe be a little bit proactive. I think they're a little bit too proactive. Yeah. I think they could have made it maybe a little bit smaller at first, and then okay, this went well. Maybe next year we'll do two games, and the next year maybe what we'll three games. But to say for the entire season, like I said, I think it was a little bit of a overreaction uh, yes. on their part, but. They're going forward with it. And keep in mind, you certainly, regardless of what the NCAA says, you certainly are not allowed to say whatever you want when it comes to social justice movements or what you believe in. There will most definitely be rules and regulations as to what you can put on your jersey. And I'm just saying that out loud. Look, if you, which I know a couple of Georgia players, have gotten light in the media of who they support in the upcoming election, if you support one person, I'm sure that you may be able to make some kind of statements, maybe not as direct as to who you support. But if you support the other person, you damn well know that that will not be allowed. And that's where I think you draw the line as to why would you even make this decision? It just does not make much sense to me. And again, these kids are 18 to 22 years old. I mean, they don't know shit. I'm just telling you that no. right now. Now, of I'm course, with, with the racial justice issues, they know way more than somebody like you or I would. So I'm all fine with that. But where do you draw the line and where does the line get crossed? That's where it gets muddied. And that's where I am not a big supporter of something like this. Not on the field, not on Saturdays. Maybe I'm just old. Who knows? But that's how I feel. We are, we are we're, we're old with uh, combined three kids. At least <laughs> yes, you have our, I, I, I still got my hair. I don't know about you. You're wearing a hat right now. So I don't know if you're, you know, those babies are keeping you up at night. Okay, there fresh, we go. Drew still has a cut. full yes, set do. of hair. Yes, I do. I actually, I actually, Sharon's been cutting my hair. So. There you go. There you Just go. Stuck, stuck in the house. One last thing, too, I want to touch on before I let you go. I talked about this on uh, Wednesday's podcast. It's been really funny watching sports media members fight each other on social media about are they rooting for sports to return or are they rooting against sports returning? And I said, it's just hilarious because they're so self-righteous. I mean, they literally think that they are the be-all, say-all when it comes back to will sports return or not. And the general public, I feel like, Aaron, says that based on their coverage on social media, it seems like a lot of them, keyword seems, it seems like they are rooting against sports returning by how they cover it. Pat Forty yesterday from Yahoo Sports, I know everybody knows who Pat Forty, it was all happy news. ACC's doing this, SEC's doing this, looks like we're going to have college football, it may start a little bit later, Big 12 announces next week, we're going to have college football. Pat Forty comes out and tweets, Some Big Ten intel via multiple sources. League has advised members it still might not play this fall. Decision on whether to start camp on time will be made in the next five days. But with testing protocols in place, that is the expectation. Schedule released to to be determined. Fluid situation. And what I say to that is no shit. Like, obviously, the conferences are putting forward their plans. Things can still change, but that is exactly what I'm talking about. Instead of continuing to say, hey, looks good, looks good, we're moving forward, yeah, but, Pat but you Forty's going to drive it in and say, possibly couldn't happen. Because that, that's not going to make a headline. Just another reporter reporting that, okay, the Big Ten and SEC and ACC are making uh, moves to make a season. Like, that. that's... You're, you're one of 20, 30 other reporters making that. But to be the guy saying, oh, I don't know, it, yeah. it's, it's not going to happen. I mean, that that's the headlines. I mean, it's all in today's world, as we all know, it's all about how many clicks do you get? How many likes do you get? How many times are people opening up 
uh, and reading your article. So if you see 20 positive articles, you're probably just, I'm going to read one of them. Yeah. I don't need to read 20 positive articles. But then if there's one guy that re- writes an article saying, oh, it may not happen. Well, okay, maybe I need to read this and see why it may not happen. I've read 20 reasons why it is. Let me read one that why it isn't. And, and now he's taking advantage of that and getting, you know, like you said, some, some clickbait. And that's all it is. It's, I don't know if it's them not wanting the season to happen. It's them just taking advantage of, of what's going on to get more people to view the articles, to get paid a few more bucks. And and that's, that's it. I think everyone wants the season to happen because they'll be bored out of their mind yeah. talking crap for, for another five months about we should have done this. We should have done that to make football occur. No, you're totally right. I mean, I feel like that was kind of reporting the obvious, but just in a negative pessimistic light. And that's what I'm trying to call out right here on punt and pass, but we're remaining positive. We are remaining optimistic. We got football happening. Damn it. Let's go ready to rock. We're ready and roll. Well, my man, congrats on a 1 million organic downloads with punt and pass three years in. I think it's grown more than I probably thought it would. I'm, I'm kind of surprised looking back that we're still doing it, but it's just been so fun, and the timing has been awesome. You and I love football. Obviously, you're going to have a great season this year with CBS Sports once again. We will continue to rock and roll. Congratulations on being a daddy. I'm glad you're back from paternity leave. Please send Sharon our best. You got anything on the way out, my man? No, it's uh... – it's been weird this summer, kind of waiting. Are we going to have a season? Are we not? You know, what are we going to talk about in the shows? And, and not, you know, let's get this thing cranking again. I think that's a great thing. I mean, we've had weekly calls with CBS, and I've had talks with my bosses at Sirius XM, the SEC channel, and it's kind of been, we don't know, we don't know. And then this past talk's kind of like, okay, let's start gearing up. I think this is happening. Let's start sending out the schedules start sending out the flight schedules and, and getting everything planned for the fall. So I think a lot of excitement, um, definitely making me happy that there's going to be football. I am happy as well. And I know our listeners are too, with the announcements of what is going to look like this fall with the 2020 college football season, keep it locked in on social media. Follow us at punt and pass on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at drew Butler. Aaron is at Aaron Marie 11 brand new punt and pass.com will be live next week week it's got a blog it's got a shop it's got a great page to get connected on all of our social media and podcast distribution pages it's fantastic puntandpass.com we'll be right there everybody have a safe and healthy weekend and we'll talk to you later see ya